Hello and welcome to this video highlighting one of the features or enhancements to the Cisco Secure Firewall. My name is Christopher Grabowski. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Systems. This is one in the series of videos created to discuss and demonstrate the latest updates within 7.0 release of software. In this video, I would like to show you Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector integration with VMware vCenter. But before we jump into the demo, let me give you a brief overview of the CS deck. In Firepower 7.0 release, we introduced dynamic objects. This is a new type of attributes allowing you to add and remove IP addresses from the objects in the real time without the need to deploy the policy. The dynamic objects are configured with REST API calls to the FMC. So in order to keep your dynamic objects up to date, you need an external script or an application to keep track of IP addresses in the network and then propagate the changes to the FMC. You can either write your own script or use Cisco provided application, the Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector. If you'd like to learn more about dynamic objects, please have a look at my other video covering the topic in the Firepower 7.0 update series. Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector is a lightweight application you can easily integrate with your FMC 7.0 or higher. The connector allows you to automate dynamic objects configuration to keep your firewall rules up to date. CSDAC tracks changes in a cloud network you set it up to monitor. Upon a change, the connector triggers a dynamic object update, which propagates to your firewalls in the real time. What's important is that the update is seamless with no need to deploy the policy from the FMC. The Dynamic Attributes Connector subscribes to the public and private cloud controllers to download attributes like VM names, assigned IP addresses, or virtual network assignments. For example, you can configure a dynamic object matching all application servers in a particular distributed port group. The object is then used in your access control policy to allow user traffic only to the active servers. As soon as you scale up the application and spin up more servers, CSDAC detects new VM IP address. The new dynamic object content is pushed to the FMC, which in turn shares this information with all managed firewalls. As a result, access control policy automatically adjusts on the firewalls in your network, and you don't even have to log into the FMC. CSDAC is a lightweight container application you install on an Ubuntu server. The first release supports VMware vCenter, AWS, and Azure providers. You can easily filter through the attributes received from those providers and set up dynamic objects according to your policy requirements. If you're interested how to install the connector, please have a look at the deployment of CSDAC on our Cisco Secure Firewall YouTube channel. Let's have a closer look at the CSDAC architecture. The application has three logical components, connectors, dynamic attribute filters, and adapters. The connectors are the modules connecting to the individual attribute providers. Their role is to read the available attributes and keep them up to date. The dynamic attribute filters module is where you shape contents of your dynamic attributes. In the example, we have three objects filtering attributes received from vCenter provider. The names represent the actual dynamic object names that will be programmed in the FMC and then used in the access control policies. The attributes from the providers are represented by keys like operating system, network, or power state. Each key has a set of associated values like name of the system or the network. The queries are built using Boolean and or operators and matching desired key and values. Lastly, we have the adapter module that connects to the FMC. This module programs dynamic objects with the IP addresses matched by our filters. In our example, a filter matching rel and CentOS returned IP addresses of two servers currently running in the vCenter infrastructure. Now, let's have a look at the live CSDAC interface and configure integration with VMware vCenter. Here I am at the CSDAC login screen. Let me log in with the admin credentials. We can see three configuration tabs reflecting the CSDAC architecture we discussed earlier. We can see connectors tab, adapters tab, and dynamic attribute filters. We are now in the connectors tab 
and at the moment there are no providers configured. Let me add a connection to a vCenter in my laboratory. I'll start with giving it a meaningful name and I set up the poll interval next. The poll interval controls how often CSDEC contacts the vCenter to check for the latest key value pairs. For the purpose of this presentation, I'll reduce it down to 5 seconds, although you might want to keep it higher in a production environment. Now I'll set up host and username details. The REST API user has read-only access privileges in my vCenter. I'm not using NSX, so I'll leave those settings empty. Lastly, to ensure secure communication, we need to install vCenter CA certificate chain. You can get the certificates from your vCenter by entering the base URL without appending port numbers or client extensions. Then click on the Download Trusted Root Certificates option. I'll copy the root CA certificate in the background and copy it over here. Once I click Save, CSDAC will try to connect to my vCenter. We can check the status and confirm the connection was successful by looking at the status column. In the Adapters tab, I already have my FMC configured and the status confirms the connection is up and running. We're all set to configure Dynamic Attributes filters now. Let me add a new Dynamic object by clicking on the plus button on the top right. We can see three sections in the new attribute filter object, the name, the connector, and the query. Observe that the query section is grayed out until a connector is selected. The name field is very significant as it will create an update dynamic object in the FMC with the same exact name as we enter here. This is especially important if you pre-configure dynamic objects in the FMC and use them later in your policies before you set them up in the CS DAC. In such case, remember to check if the names are exactly the same in FMC and CSDAC. I'll set up the name Windows Server and pick up vCenter connector we've just configured. The Query tab is now active and we can start setting up the conditions. Once you click on the key field, the list of available vCenter keys will be listed. Let's use the OS key. In the Values field, we can see a list of all operating system names available in your vCenter server. We can select one or more values to be matched by our filter. In our example, we want to match Windows Server, so I can add those values to the filter. At the moment we have the operation set to equals, hence CSDAC will do an exact key to value match. If we switch to contains, we can simplify our filter to match any OS that contains Microsoft Windows Server string. Let's save the query and observe the results using the show preview. We can see a list of IP addresses of virtual machines that were matched by our filter. Now I will add another condition to the query to make this filter even more specific. This time I'll use the network key. I'll select contains and match on any network port groups that have V20 in their name. Let's save and check the results. Now the list of IP addresses is constrained to Windows servers attached to a network segment having v20 string in their names. You can edit the contents of the filters at any time and change the operators. At the moment, my conditions are joined with an all operator. I can switch to any operator and will get a logical OR between both configured conditions with much wider result. I'll save the object and switch over to FMC to observe its contents.
In the FMC, we can see the Windows Server's dynamic object was created and has 12 map IP addresses. We can click the download arrow to see the contents of the object. Before we conclude this demo, I'd like to show you how fast CSDAC detects changes in the vCenter and propagates the updates. In the FMC, I pre-configured an access control policy using a dynamic object. The policy allows traffic to IP addresses matched by a dynamic object, match me object. Everything else is blocked. The policy is applied to the firewall and is up to date. Let me navigate to the dynamic object configuration. The MatchMe object is pre-configured on the FMC, however I haven't yet configured it in the CSDAC and there is currently no IP addresses assigned to this object. Let's switch to the CSDAC and configure a corresponding dynamic attributes filter. The MatchMe object is pre-configured already on the FMC, so I need to ensure I don't mistype its name here. The connector is vCenter. And for the query, I'll simply match any virtual machine that has match me string in its name. We can see that our filter doesn't match anything at the moment, which is expected as I don't have any VM with that name configured. Let me save. Now let's switch to the vCenter. Here I have a Windows 10 test VM I'll use in the demonstration. The IP address of this machine is 172.16.12.10. I'll set up a continuous ping to this VM through the firewall. The ping fails as expected, as there are no VMs matching the filter we've just configured. And the firewall is applied with the access control policy using that dynamic object. Now I'll rename the VM to include match me string and we'll see how fast the policy gets updated. It took less than 10 seconds for the CSDAC to detect the change, push the new dynamic object content to the FMC, and finally update the enforcing firewall. Thanks for watching this presentation. I hope you'll find CSDEC integration with vCenter useful in your Cisco Secure Firewall designs. See you next time.